This is the off-road arena at Goodwood. It's a rugged off-road area full of bumps, berms, rock crawls and danger. You need a specific kind of vehicle to go around here. At the festival speed, it's things like extreme off-road buggies or big Dakar-style vehicles. A couple of months ago, we brought the new Land Rover Defender here, and while it was okay on the berms and in the mud, it just wasn't something we wanted to take around the whole course. Today, though, we're in something altogether more rugged. This is the Ford Ranger Raptor. It's a Ford pickup truck that's been made altogether more beefy. It was inspired by the F-150 Raptor that's sold in the States and should be pretty exciting. Now you might think that because this was inspired by the F-150 in the States, there'll be some massive great petrol engine under the bonnet. Well, I'm afraid not. It's a 213 horsepower, four cylinder diesel. Which doesn't really sound that exciting, does it? It's also got a 10 speed automatic gearbox, which sounds like way too many in the kind of thing you'd expect to find on a truck. And I'm afraid it doesn't get more exciting on paper either. 62 miles an hour takes 10 seconds. It'll do 112 miles an hour and it'll even manage 35 miles to the gallon. So far, so unextreme. But looks and stats can't be everything. Underneath, the Raptor has been given a widened track, meaning the wheel arches have been flared by 150 millimeters all round. It has massive Fox Pro shock absorbers to, well, absorb anything thrown at it, and a 2.3 millimeter thick aluminium skid plate at the front to brush off any obstacles. Well, that power figure might not sound that inspiring. More importantly, it has 500 newton meters of torque and there's ventilated discs all round for better stopping power. Underneath, the ladder chassis has been strengthened with specific low alloy steel in all the areas they reckon it'll take the hardest bashing. Those fancy Fox dampers have increased travel at the front by 32% and at the back by 18 and it sits 30 millimeters higher than the standard car. Even the tow bar has been raised to make sure it can get over the biggest rocks. At the back, the normal leaf spring suspension has been jettisoned and replaced with a specifically designed coil and watts linkage unit to better deal with lateral loads. And then there's those tires, which are big 285 profile BF Goodrich off-road units. I mean, to me, I, th I think it personally looks the business. And then, well, well it's massive. On the road, it feels even more massive, if anything. It has the same footprint as a Mercedes S-Class and weighs two and a half thousand kilograms. To say that the 0 to 62 time is 10 seconds feels generous, if I'm totally honest. It is not a fast thing on road. It does have a fully locking differential to aid with traction, but I'll let Ford tell you when you notice that. The gearbox is a bit dim-witted if I'm honest. We've had it before in the Mustang and it's okay there but it really doesn't feel like it suits this car at all. It genuinely feels like it has 10 gears and it really isn't quite sure what to do with those 10 gears. On British roads it feels massive. Now, I appreciate anyone watching this in the US will think that's not a very big pickup truck but over here it feels very big. You sometimes feel like you're looking into people's first floor windows when you drive past their homes. And in town, well, it really isn't something you want to squeeze into too many gaps. The tyres are massive and are re relatively fine actually on road. If you get up to higher speeds, you can feel the vibration from 
the big chunky makeup of them, but it's not too bad, especially at low speeds. If you're on a motorway, you will feel that vibration, but here, it's only minor. It doesn't feel too bad. On road, the understeer is real. It really does understeer on those big chunky tires at the front. You can turn in and wait for it to drip, but you're gonna be waiting quite a long time, at which point you're probably gonna be in that tree over there. You really only have two choices when driving. You can either take it reasonably sedately, allow the car to be slowed down to a perfectly acceptable speed before you turn in, or turn in as hard as you can and lift off the throttle a few times and try and make it grip. Or attempt to use the two-wheel drive mode to bring the back end round, but then you'll probably be stymied by the gearbox. It's just not a car really designed to be driven fast on roads, if I'm totally honest. It's perfectly fine and I'm perfectly comfortable, but it's off-road where this car is really meant to be. So you know what? Let's go somewhere else. Here, the Raptor has six different driving modes for whatever the world can throw at it. That includes a normal driving mode and sport mode. Most intriguingly, it has a Baja mode. Baja mode, well, it can be used in four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive, so depending on what you feel the need for. And what it does is it sort of slackens off the traction control, which means that you can drive off-road not just by pointing it and squirting, but also with the throttle, especially when you're in two-wheel drive mode, or to be honest, even in four-wheel drive mode, you can feel that there's power going to the rear wheels and you can bring the back of the car around. There's also a rock crawl mode for if you're crawling over big rocks, a gravel mode, which will keep the traction control on a bit more and stop you from just spinning the wheels until you dig somewhere through to Australia where the car originally came from. And then there's snow and mud, which does the same thing, but in a slightly more extreme setting. They're changed with a button on the steering wheel. It's the button on the left-hand side, and you scroll through the different modes, which, I mean, that's fine, but I kind of wish they'd stuck it on a rotary dial somewhere in the middle here. And that sort of hits home when the fact that the change from four to two and from high to low range is on a rotary dial here. And so is the button for kill descent and to lock the diffs and the traction control. You feel like they could have easily just popped a button down there. It's quite, if you really needed to flick from mud mode to normal mode or from normal mode to mud mode, having got a little bit stuck, you'd find yourself looking away and trying to change the mode which takes time and it's just a little bit fiddly if I'm honest. This being a £52,000 car, it does come with all the mod cons you'd expect. They've not given this the interior from the F-150 which is a little bit utilitarian. Don't get me wrong, this thing still is designed to withstand whatever can be thrown at it. You would probably not worry about kicking the odd plastic when you go in here, but there's also leather on the steering wheel and leather on the dashboard. And The seats are sort of sport seats. They are comfortable and have some side bolstering, which is quite good, especially when you can go so fast in this car, but without really gripping you. I do sort of wonder whether something a bit firmer might have been slightly better for when you're really ragging it off-road. But one of the Raptor's real party tricks isn't any of that. It's the fact that one of my colleagues described it best, that it's a bit like a magic carpet. When you're off-road in some extreme conditions, and I've driven this in Morocco on some horrendous gravel roads, you can pin the throttle and do 60 miles an hour and you'll feel as if you're driving on the M25, to be honest. You will feel the ruts and you'll feel the bumps, but you won't be bothered by them. The shock absorbers are so incredibly good, it really is astonishing. Now we've been throwing this car around both the activities field and now in the rally stage just for a little bit of variety and even when you jump one of the things you notice when you leave the ground is that you know you've jumped but 
you're not thrown around, you're not feeling absolutely like your face is going to plant itself into the dash. Those Fox shocks are incredible in the way that they can absorb almost everything that's thrown at it. The steering has three and a half turns lock to lock, which when you're trying to park a car in a car park is a little bit annoying because you're just wheeling around and around and round and round and round to get back. But when you're off road, it's excellent because it means you can make smaller adjustments easier. Those dampers are also position sensitive, which means that if you are off road, like we are now, and you were to drop the left hand wheels into some mud, but the right hand wheels would stay on dry land, it, you wouldn't leave the right hand wheels struggling on dry land while the left one spun away. It would attempt to keep much better traction for the wheels that actually have grip than the ones that have lost grip, as, you, as you're going to find, which means that you should be able to haul yourself out of conditions which otherwise would possibly leave it all struggling a bit. The biggest thing holding this car back that I've found so far is me. And I've pushed myself around the activity field and around here is harder than I have for a while. We mentioned that we brought the Land Rover Defender here and it had done perfectly well, but you never really wanted to throw it around. The big, well, what's there ostensibly to be a big jump in the middle felt massive when you drove up to it in the Defender. When you drive up to it in this, I'm not sitting much higher, but it just felt smaller. It didn't feel like the big insurmountable object that it could have done. It was, well, easy. If you ever wonder why people buy big, naughty off-road pickups like this, well, it's because they make you smile like this. Ah, uh, they make you have just returned to being 12 again doing naughty things. You feel like you shouldn't be doing this. It's a car. It's not meant to be able to do that. It should be on the road. It should be completely constrained by its surroundings. And it's just like, nah, mate, we'll go anywhere you want. You can tell it was designed in Australia. It doesn't give a hoot what anyone tells it to do. But if I'm honest, yes, the engine is not the best. Yes, the gearbox is poor and a bit annoying, but it doesn't detract from how utterly astonishingly capable this car is. <laughs>